Hey, good afternoon, and welcome to the Cruise Amigos live hey. from London. I'm Chili Falls, one of the Cruise Amigos. Down below, a little better. Down below me is uh, Cruise Amigo One. When did we put one in there? That's John Reitmeyer. He's up in Minnesota. And next to him over there in London is, of course, Cruz Amigo Pete that started all this craziness. Yep. Some of you guys that watch me on uh, my Travel and Cruise Industry News, a couple weeks ago, I had a story about a woman climbing up Chichen Itza uh, and might have been a little inebriated and got arrested. Almost sure. Well, the gentleman that wrote that article is our guest today. So let me introduce you to Carlos Rosado Vandergrat. He's a writer, a um, uh, blogger from uh, down there in the Yucatan. Uh, he's originally from the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, he also has uh, gone to school in Norway and Canada. Carlos, welcome to the Cruise Amigos. Oh, it's welcome, a pleasure. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wonderful. All right. Since most of our audience here is primarily made up of cruise folks, what's the travel situation like down in the Yucatan currently? Your uh, situation with the pandemic and all that. I describe it as cautious optimism. Um, we do see more and more uh, travelers uh, showing up on the peninsula. Uh, my girlfriend lives out in Cancun, and uh, so I travel there uh, fairly often. And I have seen a, a real, uh, a real increase in, in the amount of, uh, of, of visitors to 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 the region. Uh, I've even had to pick up people at the airport a couple times, and uh, have seen a, a lot of movement. Um, in Merida itself, um, especially over the Christmas holidays, there is quite a bit of domestic tourism. Um, some international tourism uh, mostly saw, uh, you know, uh, Americans and Canadians, whereas usually Italians, Spaniards and uh, Germans would make up a very large uh, population of that uh, of that market. But, um, yeah, I mean, things are far, far, far from normal. But with the uh, reopening of archaeological sites and some uh, slightly re loosening restri uh, restrictions, we, we start to see. Um, hi, Sonny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we've started to see uh, a little bit of a return to normal. For example, this month in, um, in Merida, every year we have what we call Merida Fest, which is uh, to celebrate the anniversary of the city. This year, I believe it turned 474. And uh, so this year was a hybrid event, right? Uh, everybody thought it was going to be entirely online, but that has not been the case. There have been some uh, uh, in-person cultural events, of course, with... Uh, very considerably uh, remote, reduced capacity, but they have been going on and uh, so far so good. Uh, the governor of the state today actually gave his official, um, uh, oh, what is the word? His, his, his annual report, right? His big informant. Right. And uh, yeah, again, you know, stressing uh, cautious optimism, but, um, but yeah, but, but, but the importance of restraint at this point. You also do some um tour guiding on archaeological stuff uh, uh mm -hmm. tell us about that yeah well um one of the things i do is uh it's not so much tour guiding i i well there is there, that is an element of it but i try to facilitate uh, for people that want to visit uh remote archaeological sites right so uh that doesn't mean places like you know chichen Itza or tikal in guatemala it means usually these sites which are uh in the very dense uh, rainforest and uh, take some logistical planning to to get to. Um, right before the pandemic hit, uh, I took a group to uh, southern Campeche and visited uh, archaeological sites in Calakmul uh, and, well, in the region of the Calakmul um, basin, right? So some of those sites uh, you can get to with, with, with some effort, right, as, a, as just a private person with a car. But some do require, you know, uh, four by four vehicles and uh, a little bit more creativity, especially if you uh, run into two knots of weather. Mm -hmm. now, do you find a normal tourist would be interested in that, or is it more of a specialty person like an archaeologist? 
Um, I mean, it is a niche, but there are quite a few people that are interested in a little bit more authentic uh, archaeology travel ex experiences. Um, uh, archaeological parks in Mexico, like Chichen Itza or Chaltihuacan in Mexico State or Tikal in Guatemala, are just that. They're they're national parks, right? And they're landscaped and uh, things are very uh, uh, much more rigorous, right? Um, a lot of people want the experience of actually uh, visiting an archaeological site where they uh, where they're in the jungle, where they're going to see uh, exotic you, wildlife. Uh, you can't do that anymore, though, right? The picture we just saw, you can't do that anymore. Yeah, oh, now no, it's closed. That's no, before. No. Yeah, it's been well over ten years. Um, also, within that pyramid, I don't know if any of you ever had the opportunity to 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 visit before that time. But within, uh, there's also corridors uh, that run inside the pyramid that take you to internal chambers where there is a, a jade a jaguar figure and a chuck mole as well. And that has been closed to the public now since I'm going to say like 2006 or something like that. It's certainly been a while. But uh, Hi, Carlos. Uh, you talk about having visited it. Um, on my first ever cruise, this is going back about just over five years ago, that was on the Emerald princess and i was doing back-to-back -back caribbean cruises never been on a cruise ship before in my life and one of the one of the trips that we could do was to go to chichen itza mm -hmm. yeah but the actual trip how itself did cruise, how did that cruise start pete how did how did that how did that cruise start we left port and then we went out basically yeah so no, no, on I was, that I just wondering cruise, about how you got there how did that yeah. work <laughs> you we know how i got there line, there's actually a whole show talking about how i got there carlos could you believe but i didn't get on the boat for half an hour as a guy know. but with, with this particular ex this particular excursion chits and Itza, yeah we had we, we we cruised into cosimo so we had to take the ferry across from cosimo to the mainland first of all mm -hmm. and then we had to take a bus into Chichen Itza. Right. Now the ferry was about 45 minutes, I think, something like that. Yeah. yeah the bus awesome. journey, the bus journey was over two hours. Mm -hmm. We only had 45 minutes on the ground yeah, with our guide to yeah. walk around Ch no. Chichen Itza. And then once we'd done the walk around Chichen Itza, we had to do the same thing going back. Really when I look back at that particular um, um, excursion, I am so happy I did it. Chips and Itza is one of the most. They, they were calling it chicken pizza, by the way. Our guide kept calling it chicken pizza. That, that's a pet yeah. peeve of mine. You, 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 you've, yeah. you've got, you've been steered wrong. <laughs> I know, and that's what he kept. That's what he would kept saying on the bus. He goes, "The locals call it that." I'm going, "What? They call it what?" But I tell you something. It's an incredible place. It really yeah. is. And so I would say to anybody, even though I only had forty-five minutes there, mm -hmm. and what people don't realize is. It's one of the new seven wonders of the world. That's correct, That's right. Carlos, yeah. yeah? Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. Chichen Itza is a, is a fantastic archaeological site, and it's, it's, it's amazing, right? But what sometimes is a little bit frustrating is that it people kind of treat it like it's the center of the Mayan world and the only ball game out there. Chichen Itza is but one of hundreds mm. of archaeological sites you can visit. Uh, in the Yucatan Peninsula alone, you know, not even talking about Guatemala or Belize or anything like that. Um, there are open to the public, ready to visit archaeological sites in Yucatan State, well, in the three states that make up the peninsula, about, uh, you know, 40, 40 sites. And that's to say nothing of, uh, you know, all the stuff that's out in the jungle. Again, Chichen Itza is great, but uh, it's not the end all and be all. And it is really by not even any real stretch of the imagination, the most impressive site. Uh, the, 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 the Pyramid of Kukulkan is dwarfed several times over by structures in southern uh, Campeche or in East Samoa. If you, could only, if you could only visit one site, which one would you visit? That's inconceivable. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I don't know. That'd be, that's, a, that's a pretty hard question to ask, right? Um, it, it's, also, it's also different and... Uh, the context, right, is is always uh, very unique. Um, Chichen Itza, of course, has the benefit of being pretty much exactly halfway between Merida and Cancun, which is probably initially why it was kind of chosen um, for the big restorations and the you know tourism development. Right? There's other sites uh, very near it, like Ekbalam, for example, which in years in year, recent years has uh, been getting more more visitors. Um, there's also 
uh, Koba, which is also uh, quite a bit closer to Tulum. It's just about an hour away from Tulum. Um, but yeah, but asking me which one archaeological site I would recommend is, is, a, is a futile task. <laughs> Chili, do you see what I've added down there on the bottom? Uh, what do I do to it? If you, well, if you just click that and add it on, there you go. See, now here I can show. Do you see my mouse moving too? I don't see the here. cursor, but I see the map. There we go. Uh, but you yeah, see, uh, here's, here's, uh, where, here's where Pete was over here. Here's Cancun. And here's the big town you're talking about with yeah. an M. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go in and here see is here's where here's the town starting with a V. I'm not gonna try and pronounce these. It's a great town. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But here's where chicken pizza, chicken pizza is gonna come up to us here. Chicken pizza. Wow. Here we go. And there it is. See, I'm going to go out just a little bit to show you that town there. Do you think it deserves the, the, the title as one of the new seven wonders of the world in that case, Carlos? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, mm. it, it is a fantastic example of uh, pre-Hispanic architecture. It is, uh, again, I am not talking down Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza is a fantastic mm. place. And if you have the chance to visit it, definitely go ahead, right? Uh, it's just as somebody who has uh, spent so much of their professional life and uh, and, and kind of intellectual <laughs> prowess, such as it is, uh, thinking about these issues, um, mm. it, it, it is sometimes a little bit frustrating. Um, I did my. It's uh, very commercial, you'd say, in other words, rather than, rather than seeing the real Mexico. Well, I mean, it's also just a result of the way the tourism industry is nowadays. Mm. Um, when I was a, a little guy, my dad was a tour guide uh, as well. And uh, you know, we used to take groups out in Cessnas to remote archaeological sites. Um, it wasn't uh, as comfortable. There was a, it was a lot longer days. But, you know, we'd see toucans and the occasional jaguar. And it was just a much more exciting, less packaged experience. And you can still have that kind of experience, but it really requires that you're more mindful about it and yeah. uh, go out, go out seeking it, right? Uh, what you do? Are you are you more expedition, really? You're, you're doing proper expeditions. Yeah, we're doing we're doing more expedition work. Yeah, it's it's not uh, yeah. like a like a like a package holiday, really. Mm. And I, my my first um, the first thing I tell people, you know, when when they when they approach me and they're interested, <clears> is, <throat> all right, but but no whining, like under yeah, isn't. Uh, 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 you, you know, a luxury holiday. Mm -hmm. you, you might see a snake. There's nothing I can, I can do about that, right? Uh, it's it's possible, right? So uh, the, the the rewards are are great, though, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a different kind of tourism than what a lot of people expect. And uh, I always try to be very uh, clear that there are some physical requirements as well, right? Because you are going to have to be able to to trek along and uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, before I get to a really fabulous, well thought out, intelligent archeological question. I've got to ask an important question. Tell me about shepherd's cake with guacamole. Oh my Ooh. God. Ooh. God, that looks good. Oh no, that's a, that, that, that's, that's a bit of an abomination. It was actually a bit of an inside joke. Um, shepherds. You, 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 you got the word from carne del pastor, which is a kind of uh, meat that's very similar to what they do in the Middle East on a on a spit. Yes. And uh, you, you find that all over Mexico. And that's uh, the pastor meat, which literally translates to, to shepherd's meat. And then the... Uh, the What's the source? What's the source? Right? Well, the, 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 it's, it's usually uh, pork. Pork, it's okay. Pork. Uh, and... Uh, and then the, the 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 bun on that is actually a concha, which is a sweet bread, and yeah. I, I, it's just one of those things. I just opened the fridge, and that's what I had, <laughs> and I and I threw it together. And needless to say, I saw that from your Facebook page. Yeah, I just yeah. thought it looked delicious. That's, that's, that's <laughs> so it's kind of a Krispy Kreme thing. It's kind of a Krispy Kreme. Uh, uh, what is that thing they sold in New York? You know the the, the cronut. It's kind of a cronut, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was it was a bit over the top. Oh yeah, there's the uh, chakmol I was talking about earlier, and that uh, that is within the pyramid of Kukulkan and Chichen Itza, wow. and those are uh, jade encrusted uh, uh, well, it's jade, right? 
Um, there is no jade natively in the Yucatan Peninsula. That came uh, probably from Guatemala. The Maya maintained very uh, large, uh, net, like, you know, market networks. Mm -hmm. What do we have here? That's Turkey, actually. <laughs> ah. That's you and Turkey. Yeah, I think that might be... Is that one of your exhibition exhibitions? Expeditions, such as I. No, no, that, that's that's just that's just fun. Other than Mesoamerica, the when you have your expeditions, how many people come with you? By the way, Carlos, uh, how, how many are in your group normally, as an average? Yeah, it really depends three, on maybe. how. Three to five, three to five. It, I'm guessing. It, it it can be. I mean, I have done groups of up to like uh, fifteen before uh, at the a little bit less challenging. Um, uh, excursions, but uh, but yeah, oftentimes it is between three and four people that just uh, hire me privately to do it because, and, and usually it's something very specific they 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 want to get to, and uh, and 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 those people do tend to be a little bit more uh, even more niche than just the average person who who wants to go off and uh, visit a place like the, the biosphere. Oh, I mean, are they actually hoping to discover things and hoping to find things? No, no, that, that, that also be severely illegal <laughs> to go. Yeah. Uh, 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 here in Mexico, uh, we're, we're very, very heavily regulated when it comes to, uh, you know, any kind of archaeological activity. So it's uh, very important to always also be very mindful of that and make sure that, uh, uh, that your guests understand, right? Like you, you take nothing but pictures, right? So that they're not going to end up in the British Museum like no, my ancestors. No were really no. bad at <laughs> No, and, and I've told them, I'll be the first person to rat you out. Like, yeah. you, you don't do this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to federal, pol to the federal prison. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> but everybody's got their... No, no, no. No, <laughs> no there's zero ambiguity there. <laughs> Since my family was kind of tied to Moralia a long time ago, mm -hmm. one of the things we hear about in the States a lot is on the violence caused by the cartels mm -hmm. how was that situation in the yucatan good bad indifferent <laughs> non-existent really yucatan has for reasons i don't really know uh been shielded from really pretty much everything and we we have petty crime like everywhere else but uh merida and the yucatan in general is a very very safe place um, especially the state of Yucatan itself. Yucatan is made up by three states, um, Campeche uh, to the west, uh, Yucatan in the north, and uh, Quintana Roo, or as gringos call it, Quintana Roo in the, <laughs> in the east. Uh, and, and of those states, really, um, Yucatan state really is the, uh, the, the safest. Sonny wants to know, where do we find Carlos and his expeditions? Uh, you can drop me an email at carlos.rosado at gmail.com or check out uh, yucatandiscovery.com yeah i'll think what we're trying to do guys we're trying to put some links to your page if you've got facebook pages for, for what you do carlos uh yes we have the i have the yucatan discovery page but that hasn't been active uh you know since the beginning of the pandemic mm. and it's uh, only been doing uh individualized tours for very obvious reasons and even that has only picked up recently uh, since um, most archaeological uh, sites have been closed to the public. But we are starting to open again. Uh, on uh, last Sunday, I went for the first time back to a like actual archaeological park, the archaeological site of Sibi Sheltun, which is uh, near Merida, to to cover its reopening for story for Yucatan Magazine. But uh, but other than that, it's been just uh, you know off the grid sites. There is a lot of archaeology that is not in an archeological park. Uh, this area was uh, inhabited for thousands of years by, by people. And of course they, they built stuff. So if you, you know, dig a hole, it's like in London in the underground, right? You, you, mm. you or in Rome, you dig a hole, something's gonna come up. And uh, there, is, there, there is a lot of that, right? There's a lot of just pyramids out in fields and- yeah. Got any secret sites? Do you know some places that other people might not know? Oh yeah, I, I I know I know tons of places. I've myself <laughs> personally visited over two hundred archaeological sites and documented no them. Kidding. Uh, here in, uh, in in Yucatan and Central America, and 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 there's 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 tons of places, right? And and again, that's why I I sometimes uh, really want to communicate to people. It's like, yeah, Chichen Itza is great, but that should be your point of departure, 
right? Mm. Not, not, not your goal. <laughs> I mean, I've got to ask, I mean, have you got anything planned in the near future? And Anything planned? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm hoping that if things go, go well, I'll be uh, taking a trip to Chiapas in April and would be visiting the archaeological sites of Yaxilan and Bonampak along the Sumacinta River, which is uh, the area where Mexico borders Guatemala, and also visiting uh, the uh, Mayan cities of Palenque. And yeah, yeah, so mm -hmm. that's, if things, if things go well, the, uh, the, the, the next uh, trip we'll be doing. And that's also one that's not particularly difficult and one mm -hmm. where you spend the night at hotels every night. So it's not uh, out camping or, or, or anything like that. We're, we're starting off slow. I mean, is there an expedition that you really want to do at some point, you know, in, in your life that you haven't done? Is there mm -hmm. a place that you really want to visit for yourself? It's not, mm -hmm. it's not so much a place I haven't visited yet, but I want to do it differently. So there is no direct communication between the th southern Mexican state of Campeche and the, and the Paten department in Guatemala. And that region is just rife with archaeological sites. It's just, uh, there's just so much around. And I've had the opportunity to, to visit uh, those sites before, but I've been airlifted in uh, on, on a helicopter. And I would love to go by foot from Calakmul in southern Mexico uh, to El Mirador in Guatemala. And that would be uh, quite a hike and also a little bit ambiguous legally because there's no border there right so mm. i'm not sure how that would work but i just think that would be the that that kind of be the coup de gras right because uh uh now where, where, was, where was your starting place in calakmul in mexico spell, spell it for me please uh c-a-l-k-m-u-l calakmul yeah you uh, want me to pull the map up john and sorry, you would just give me a second, and then and then where would your ending place be? Probably Mirador, like Mirador, like like spell. it sounds Mirador, yeah. Spell it though. I'm I'm terrible at that. Spell M I R A D O R. E San Antonio, Nuevo Leon, Mexico, no, no. or uh, or in Guatemala. In Guatemala, in the Paten, yeah. What What would you be hoping to find, Carlos, if you if you're able to do that? <clears throat> well, what I'd be hoping to find, I mean, a, a wildlife uh, for one. I mean, that that area is full of uh, tapirs and uh, and jaguars, uh, ocelots, toucans, toucanets, all kinds of uh, wonderful flora and fauna. Um, and and yeah, and just you know, really take my time and stop off at a lot of the archaeological sites I've, I've maybe visited before and uh, stay the night. And uh, it's uh, that whole area. Is um and we on I won't feel well. Sorry, I missed that. Who who was was that? You would you document what you do on film as well? Mm. Would I document it on film? I don't know. I I, I don't know about me. Yeah, um, I would probably uh, mostly photograph okay. it. I mean, I do do some videography, but uh, probably just more 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 photograph it, and that'd be a trip I'd. I'd really like to do for myself. But again, the, the challenges of uh, crossing international borders at not approved mm -hmm. uh, checkpoints is kind of difficult. And uh, and to be completely honest, I think it probably should be that way. That is uh, one of the really few remaining uh, kind of like virgin rainforests in Central America. So um, opening up tourist routes would open the way for even more illegal logging and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. even though it's something that I think would be you know, really amazing and super cool. It's probably a better idea to just keep it as it is. Okay, Julie, if you want to take that picture. Okay, so I can't find your southern destination, but here's the Guatemala um, border here, and then here's Belize. And so here's where you want to start. Uh -huh. and, and I don't find any roads in there at all. Uh, there's a road alongside of you here. And this yeah. looks like a, res a reserve of some kind, a national park yeah. you'd be walking through. And uh, you'd finally cross a highway here. And then you're literally out in the no man's land. That's right. We'd actually probably start around where that highway is. 
Okay. So the, marker, the marker probably just means the beginning of the national park. Right. So you'd want to start here on this road then. Yeah. 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 And then pretty much just the, the uh, destination point would be just like 15 or 20 clicks south of the Guatemalan border. Okay. And you can see here, uh, 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 20 miles is, uh, like downtown to here. So it's 40 miles from this road here, uh, down to the Guatemala border. Mm -hmm. at, at this uh, at this uh, view, and then you'd, you'd want to go down here to this highway, maybe where Flores is. Would uh, you want to go that far? Um, that that's quite different. That's uh, Flores is kind of like the, uh, the the city out of which most trips to Tikal are organized. Okay. And okay. Uh, I mean, of course, it's always pleasant to go out that way. But uh, probably, sure, uh, make it as fine as uh, as far up as um, as uh, Mirador. Yeah. Wow, it's all, it looks like just dense rain. Oh, it, it, it's, it super is, it super is. But that is all, I mean, it's, it's the, the amount of archaeology in that region is extremely dense. Um, you've, of course, heard of Tikal, and uh, Tikal and Kalakmul were at war for over two centuries. And so they, were, they, they both fortified that entire region extremely heavily. And mm. uh, there, there's, there are cities uh, dotting that entire landscape. But El Mirador pre, uh, predates um, Tikal by well over 1,500 years and uh, mm. has really thrown into question what the classical story about the timeline in Mesoamerica was. It, people used to really believe that the Olmec were the mother civilization, um, but uh, contemporary research has shown that sites in this region that I'm talking about now uh, really pre predate even the Olmec. And... Uh, have structures that are as uh, enormous and magnificent as anything in the classic or post-classical periods. It's really uh, thrown things into quite a into quite a fuss. And How far a, back do you think they date, Carlos? How far back do these structures date? Do you think? Right. So when we're talking about a site like El Mirador, if we go by uh, traditional chronologies, uh, it would date it in some time in the very early archaic period, in which you really expect to find not much more other than pottery and, my, and maybe. Uh, foundations on top of which you build um when we we were hunter gatherers then basically right basically but uh you you have pyramids that rival anything else in the rest of the world uh being built during that period in uh 2000 bc right i mean it, it, it it's it's very confusing i, I mean there, there there's no real way to to explain it away but um again the the the, the, the classical story is that the olmec is a mother civilization they created the first writing system, the first calendar, and then other uh, peoples like the Maya took those technological innovations and built their civilization. But uh, really, that, that, that seems to be an extremely oversimplified story at this point. Wow, it goes back even further in time. It's oh, yeah, fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a very good reason to believe that. Mm -hmm. mm. Nikki wants to know, what's the COVID situation like where you are? Well, uh, after the Christmas holidays, we have had a spike. Um, compared to other regions of the country, we're, we're not doing that badly, but uh, we're far from the point where we should be feeling complacent. Um, we have started vaccinations. Uh, I was speaking to my cousin yesterday. She, she works at a hospital, and uh, she's had her vaccinations. So uh, things are, are rolling out, and really, overall, people here have been very responsive and very responsible. And uh, yeah, we're, we're just hoping that we can be done with this as soon as possible. I did hear, I did hear, Carlos. I mean, obviously, all these incredible places you want to visit, but there is one place which just seems as incredible that you want to go to, and I hope one day you're able to do it. It's a, it's a place called Legoland. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, in Denmark. Um, Tell us about it. Tell us why. <laughs> well, I mean, my my daughter lives in Norway, and. Uh, you know, you, you, you can take the cruise uh, right from the port in Oslo and then just go straight to Legoland in Denmark, you know, on, 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 on the boat. And it seems like a very low impact, fun kind of trip to do with a little kid. So, so yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that could I mean, be one of your tougher expeditions, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah, maybe, maybe next summer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic. I love it. Sorry, Chili. I've got another question to ask you, Carlos, because I mean, I've, these are these places that were built two, three thousand years ago. You, you wonder 
Carlos. I mean, lots of people wonder how they were built. I mean, what what, what are your theories? I mean, how do people who are hunter gatherers, you know, they're not even farmers yet, I don't think. Uh, well, how were, are they able to build these uh, incredible structures? No, they were they were they were farmers. Um, they were. They they knew what they were doing. Um, one of the technologies that is most overlooked uh, when it comes to ancient peoples is a good predictable calendar. And why is that so important? If you have a good calendar, you know when to to do your crops, and you know when to do your war, and you know when to build, and you're not wasting valuable time and resources. Uh, going after the wrong food stuff, right? So the Maya had a very good understanding of, of time and how to, uh, you know, spread out their labor to make it, you know, uh, be as, as valuable as possible. And uh, it, it's certainly remarkable what they did, and it is very impressive, but these people were by no means unsophisticated. And uh, they, 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 they were farmers, they... they uh, also through selective uh, uh, techniques, uh, we're able to produce uh, crops with uh, higher yields of protein. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, yeah, they, 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 they were totally capable of it. Um, yeah, it was really tough. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure some people weren't uh, 100% on board with, with some of these construction projects they were uh, siphoned into. But, mm. but yeah, just, just brains and brawn, man. I mean, it's, uh, there's, there's no magic uh, to it, how, how do you explain pyramids, uh, the pyramid design being built and discovered all over different parts of the world when they weren't in any real contact with each other, or were they in contact with each other? How do you well, explain that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's fairly easy. I mean, if you only have stone, right, if that's your building material, and you want to build really big, you're going to end up building a pyramid, right? It mm. might have aesthetic differences, but you have to have a very big, solid, heavy base and then build up from that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you're going to end up with that vague shape and uh, ziggurats in, uh, in, in Iraq and uh, pyramids, step pyramids in Yucatan and pyramids in Egypt, um, despite that same kind of general, you know, design are very, very different. Yeah, I, I know I'm not in the UK, I don't think. I don't think we've had, I'm not sure we've got any pyramids. I, well, you could correct me if I'm wrong, Carlos. Well, but... I mean, there's pretty big earth mounds, right? I mean, uh, yeah. all over the uh, the British Isles and, 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 and Ireland, of course, there was uh, very large earth uh, mounds as far back as the Neolithic. And some of those are fairly sophisticated too. Um, you know, not not quite at the level of having internal yeah. chambers. And, yeah. You know, yeah, we, like we've, got stone, we've got Stonehenge and we've also got <laughs> Avebury, Avebury as well. Right. Which is a little yeah. bit more unknown to, to most people. Mm -hmm, that's right. Yeah. No, there's there's a there's great feats of uh, engineering and architecture all, all over the ancient world. So when you're you're out in I don't what I don't know what you call it, out in the bush. Um I, I mean, there's all kinds of danger out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're putting your life on the line every minute aren't you i mean yes and no i mean it's not like a. I mean okay for starters as far as predators go uh the top predator in the region is a jaguar but the jaguar is solitary unless you give it a reason to come after you it it really won't it's not like a hunger. Bear. i'm giving you hunger huh well, i'm giving you hunger and there's and all kinds of other yummy things to eat you know uh, we're not <laughs> We're not super appealing uh, to them. I have personally never heard of a attack on a person okay. by a jaguar. Um, cattle, yes. There was a case a few years ago where this woman, you're not allowed to bring dogs into these biospheres. Oh. So anyway, this woman brought a dog and they didn't let it in and she tied it up outside the entrance to the site. And the dog, yummy, yeah, yummy. Yeah, it's like yeah. a free snack. Yeah, yeah, it was just, yeah. Uh, it was just the, the easiest kill this jaguar ever had. Um, <laughs> But as far as people go, no, there has never been a, a reported case. Um, as far as large animals, uh, tapirs sometimes will will charge uh, if they're if they're threatened. But they have very low centers of gravity, so even a little bit of zigzagging um, throws throws them off. Um, but again, that's 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 very rare. Um, there's snakes and stuff like that. Uh, there are, but we uh, have 
very good boots, like, and uh, nothing a snake could could bite through or, or anything like are, that. Are they more squeezers or more eaters? Sorry. Are they squeezers or biters? The snakes. Uh, they're more biters, but I've okay. I've never had an incident myself uh, with, with with a snake. Um, of course, when if you're spending the night in camping uh, out in out of the jungle, you, you you know you take your precautions, but it's it's nothing insurmountable and nothing that you know it's yeah. I mean, Nikki's asked. Nikki's asked. Um, hi, Nikki. Um, Carlos, did the will exist in pre-Columbian culture? Did the will exist in pre-Columbian culture? That's a question from Nikki. Wheel. Wheels. The wheel. Oh, the wheel. Okay. That's my English accent, Carlos. All right. <laughs> um, yes, the wheel did exist in pre-Columbian cultures. Um, you see it in toys, for example, uh, amongst the Maya and the Aztecs. So you find these little, you know, like little dog figures with wheels on them that children used to play with. Um, I think the question is, well, why wasn't it uh, more widely adopted? And the answer is they didn't have horses or any kind of pack animal that could pull you know, a, mm. a, a wheeled wagon or anything like that. So it was just not as useful. The technology was not a mystery to them. It's just that, you know, there, there was no real means to, <clears throat> to, to pull carts or anything. So um, it wasn't totally... Apart from people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. One of your articles that I, I caught somewhere along the line, uh, I'm going back to your reporter side now. Uh-huh. Uh, had to do with a fire at Tulum. Many of us have been to Tulum. Uh, tell us what happened. Um, you know, here in Yucatan, there's a lot of structures that we build with like thatch roofs, especially in like kind of like tourist areas because tourists really like it. It looks more tropical. It's uh, less hot. Um, but these dry out really, really easily. And really all it takes is a cigarette butt to have one of those bad boys just uh, go go up and play. And it's not that um, rare an occurrence. I mean, it happens like <laughs> fairly often, really, that a fat truth goes up. It was just unlucky that this happened in, in an area which was pretty dense. And I think it was a clothing store or something like that. So then that gave it a lot of fuel and it just kind of uh, kept expanding. But I mean, fortunately, nobody was even, nobody was hurt. So uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't that bad an incident, really. Okay. Um, you're a writer, Carlos. Can you tell uh, everybody who you write for and, and, and where do you blog? Where can people see any blogs that you do? Mm -hmm. Well, I write, uh, I blog at uh, YucatanExpatLife.com. Uh, we're currently rebranding uh, to be uh, YucatanMagazine.com. I also uh, uh, do uh, work for uh, Yucatan Today, which is the uh, kind of premier uh, tourism magazine here in Yucatan. They just turned 33 years old last week so they've been they've been in this for for a very long time um i blog also at carlosrosado.com though i haven't been as active there as i as i have in the past uh and as well on uh, yucatandiscovery.com which is more the tour operation side of it um but again that has not been uh, particularly active uh, during covid on our page if anybody's watching can we do share this around various different um, different groups and stuff as well carlos yeah so on our page is the, the, the Cruz Amigos Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And when the show's finished, what happens is Facebook puts another version of this onto our wall that has all four of our photos on it, video. So right. and that, that, that auto plays live. Um, mm -hmm. Once it does that, um, could you put a few links in comments to where you blog? So yeah. anybody who's watching this, you know, because we often get thousands of viewers watch it from different groups. They can mm -hmm. then go and actually have a look at where your blogs. Could you do that in yeah, a, in? Absolutely. Yeah. So everybody watching, uh, make sure that you've liked the Cruz Amigos Facebook page, and the version which would be the top version on the wall, and you'll see all four of us there, and it auto plays live in the comments. Carlos will put a few links to where you can see his wonderful blogs. It sounds incredible, and I really look forward to following your expeditions you know they you know it's like going back to the old days in some ways carlos i love it yeah yeah it's uh it, it, it's a lot of fun and i really hope with all my heart that uh that things get back to normal I, you know it's what i what i really love to do I'm, I'm never happier than when i'm out of the jungle with a camera around my shoulder and uh showing people around mm -hmm. the uh the, the 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 truly uh 
wonderful things that are here in, uh, in southeastern Mexico. And you've got so much more to discover, haven't you? That's oh, the yeah. beauty about it. It's never, it's never ending. It really is. It's, that, that is part of the, that is part and of the wonder. You could make that incredible discovery one day in the future. You know, it could be <laughs> you who makes that incredible discovery. It happens. You know, I just love it. You know, it's possible. Who knows? Don't discount yeah. it. <laughs> John, anything from you? No, it's just been. It's just. I like to just sit here and listen because uh, it just sounds so neat. I mean, I'm just wondering. Uh, uh, you talked about the top predator out there in the jungle, though, but you excluded man from uh, that I, list. Of course. And uh, do you do you meet people out there? I mean, do you ever fear that somebody's going to come along and take your good camera or your or uh, is there any kidnapping at all goes out there down there at all? Is that any kind of a just not, huh? No, I mean, especially not that far out. Okay. I mean, I've, I've personally never heard. I mean, it might have happened. When you're that far out, you usually uh, run into either archaeologists. Um, the British have a military base in Belize, and sometimes some of those folks are out in some yeah, of the, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Who's the most road. incredible? Who, who have you run into in the middle of nowhere, Carlos? Uh, who, have you, who have you bumped into? Um, well, there's um, here in Yucatan. There's uh, the, the chicle tree, which is what they make uh, natural the, chewing gum from. Yeah, and the original chicles. Yeah. yeah, they also use it for some industrial purposes. So sometimes you work, you run into uh, you know just into people out there working, um, extracting uh, that raw material. Um, I have run into people a couple times. I suspect were probably involved in illegal uh, uh, logging. Uh, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, uh, there's some pretty valuable wood out there, and it is uh, very illegal, of course, because it's a, a, a protected a protected area. Um, but you don't really run into very many people, and that's kind of part of the beauty of it, right? You, you, don't, you, you, you don't go up into the mountains in the fjord of Norway, you know, wanting to, you know, chat with folks. You, you just kind of want to enjoy these big, open, yeah. natural uh, spaces. Mm -hmm. I got two requests, Chili, before you end the show. Yeah, yeah, we haven't talked about if we haven't done food yet, you guys. Oh, oh yeah. Food, go for it. Go for it, John. John's the expert. Okay. What's the food? What's what do not not when you're on your camping trip and you have to eat little packets, but I mean where you are. What's what what's for food? What are we gonna uh, if I'm gonna go all that way, I wanna know what I'm gonna be eating. Yeah, well we eat better than just packets, I can tell you that. Well yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um well Yucatan uh has a very uh distinct uh, gastronomy here in Mexico. Uh, people think of Mexican food and they kind of imagine just this kind of homogeneous, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we eat the same things all over the country. We don't. Um, within the country, I mean, for example, Puebla is another region which, of course, is known very much for its cuisine and its moles and uh, chiles and nogada and stuff like that. Here in Yucatan, uh, a, lot of our, a lot of our food, and I actually just wrote an article about this for uh, Yucatan today. Uh, I think it's out or it'll be out in the next issue. Uh, we have a lot of uh, pre-Hispanic influence in our food, a lot of uh, Mayan influence. So um, you've probably heard of cochinita pibil before, you know, that is, uh, uh, that is uh, a, a very traditional um, food here. Uh, pibil is uh, cooked, wrapped in banana leaves and cooked in underground stoves with super hot rocks for long, amount of time, long amounts of time. And marinated in sour oranges, and the meat just you know just, just falls apart. It's really delicious uh, with pickled onions. Um, mm. Then we have, uh, yeah, yeah we, 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 Yucatan really is a, 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 a great destination when it comes to, uh, to food. Um, we have our panuchos and salbutes, which are basically our like hot dogs and, and hamburgers, and they're like uh, fried tortillas uh, filled with beans, uh, turkey meat, avocado onions um it's kind of like our like our fast food right mm -hmm. uh then we have a lot of other dishes which are a bit more of uh, the spanish influence so we have uh, a dish which is one of my personal favorites we just call it uh frijol con puerco which really, literally just means pork and beans but it's like a stew with pork and bean and tomato and onions and cilantro and uh Ooh. radish and where and can i find the recipe to this dish huh where can I find a recipe to this dish? Send me a message later, and I'll, and I'll send okay. it. Okay. 
but it's but it's really one of those things that you don't often find in restaurants. Like it's not a, sure every yeah, mother knows every mother knows how to make it. Exactly, it's something you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, no, no, this, this is a this is a, a great part of the world when it when it when it comes to food. That's that's for sure. Wonderful, wonderful. I want that recipe absolutely. I'll make it here, and I'll just be enjoying it while the guys are around the world wondering how I made it. So that'd be great. That's and you know, whenever you're going to have a new article about something coming out, either mm -hmm. send us a message or just jump on here, whatever show we're having, just jump on for a minute and say, hey, I got this coming out and here's the link. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I, I publish pretty much daily. On yeah, but I mean, whenever there's a big one, you know, every two, okay. three weeks, just right. come on with us. Tomorrow, yeah. actually, on, uh, okay. on, on, on Yucatan Magazine. Um, releasing an article about the archaeological site of Scambo on the northern coast of, uh, of Yucatan as part of our new Archaeological Mondays, uh, sorry, Archaeology Mondays uh, series, right? And you so, can put a link to that on, uh, on the, yeah, absolutely. as we said, yeah. on the Cruz Amigos, on the, yeah. on the messages to this show, yeah? yeah so okay. people, tomorrow we can click on it and we can have a look at it and I can share it on our pages as well, Carlos, yeah? Wonderful. It's shareable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah we yeah. do all that. And, mm -hmm. and as John said, please, if you've got any of these amazing, you know, expeditions you're going to do, please let us know. And also let us know how you get on in Legoland with your daughter <laughs> for Norway. That'd be wonderful as well Absolutely. when you cruise there. Yeah. Uh, Nikki also wants to know, uh, do you use any drones? Uh, yes, I do. I do. Uh, I do use uh, drones. Um, in archaeological sites in Mexico, the ones that are federally run, uh, you are not allowed to fly drones. It is prohibited. But as I said, there are a lot of archaeological sites that are just kind of out of the wild here. Um, even within the city of Merida, which is a city of one million people, there's archaeological remains to be seen yeah. you know, all over. Sure. It's like in Rome, you know, you're driving along and, oh, there's a Circus Maximus. Cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's what it's about, kind of similar to that. What about, what about the new satellite technology, which is yeah. discovering hidden hidden sites are you using that as well do you get access to that no i don't use lidar uh to to use lidar you need a uh, much more sophisticated uh drones or directly from from satellite and basically those are very sophisticated uh, thermal in imagers that can i mean there, there's uh minimal differences in the temperature for example stone can get if it's been cut by human hands as opposed to just natural processes so um, using LIDAR, uh, scientists can, can detect, you know, just from looking at aerial images uh, where there's large concentrations of materials like carved stone, right? And then mm -hmm. if you see enough of them, uh, you say, oh, there's, there's, there's something there. And they're also uh, sensitive enough to penetrate the ground pretty, pretty far, right? So, yeah, no, it's an, it's an incredible tool. In, in a way, it's kind of taking a bit of the romanticism away mm -hmm. from the uh, exploration, but... But no, but 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 it's a but it's a fantastic tool to have, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I have to tell you, I had no idea the direction this show was going to go today, and this has been to me fascinating. So, Carlos, we want to thank you for being with us. This has been just terrific. Um, please stay in touch with us. Let us know what you're doing. Uh, we'll always be happy to. Promote yeah, stuff yeah, that you yeah. got going on there. Uh, and uh, did we lose Carlos there? No, don't go Sorry, away. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. there he goes. back. <laughs> so anyway, that's going to about wrap us up for today, guys. Uh, all of you guys in the audience, thanks for being with us. Thanks for all the comments. Thank you, very uh, much. Pete and John. Thank you as always, Carlos. Again, thank you. What a great, great show. You guys all have a wonderful day. Later, y'all. Thank you very much. Bye.